Good eye, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Those of you who are familiar with my channel will be aware that for a long time a certain old hermit has been planning to get an electric bicycle. And about three and a half weeks ago, this was ordered. $2,999 worth. Comes with a rack, front and back lights, and it's what they call a mid-drive electric bike. So the motor is down there, attached to the chain wheel, so the electric motor can work through the derailleur gears. However, the day after I ordered the bike, Armadale, which is the city in which the electric bike shop is located, went into lockdown due to COVID, having broken out from Sydney because glad ass Berejiklian's Liberal National Government went for a latte lockdown, applied softly, and therefore the virus broke out. I had to self-isolate for two weeks because I had been in Armadale after sewage was discovered in the, so after virus was discovered in their sewage works. And I was there the day before they discovered cases in Armadale, positive cases. So I had to self-isolate for a fortnight, which made doing things difficult. The whole exercise was made even more interesting because my mother had been transferred from Armadale Hospital to Newcastle Hospital and she got into Newcastle, I think, the day before Newcastle was locked down. So it became difficult to visualise getting her out of Newcastle. But then when Armadale went into lockdown, it became possible because whereas you can't transfer anybody from a lockdown zone to a clean zone, you can transfer somebody from a lockdown zone to a lockdown zone. So she was able to hitchhike back to Armadale on the air ambulance. And... Uh, Monday, I learned that she was going to be coming home on Wednesday. So on Tuesday, I toddled into town and spoke to the police and made sure that I could get into Armadale and back home without incurring a $5,400 fine. And I mentioned to the police officer that I wondered whether it would be okay for me to visit the push bike shop and buy whatever they had on the floor that was more or less suitable rather than waiting another well as they told me after waiting for three weeks for a bike that was four weeks away as of two days ago the suburban that i'd ordered was still at least four weeks away so it's on the boat it's coming from china it hasn't got to melbourne but melbourne's locked down and sydney's locked down the case rate the new daily case rate yesterday in sydney was 630 previous day it was 570 the previous day it was i think 480 so sydney is in a it's just transitioning from slow exponential growth to fast exponential growth there's COVID in the sewage works at ballina and lennox head and yamba which is east and northeast of me there's an outbreak of COVID at i think walgett and wilcania and burke which are all west of me outbreak of COVID at Dubbo, which is southwest of me. It just occurred to me that it would be a clever idea to buy whatever they had that was pretty much suitable. So instead of the Suburban with the mid-drive motor, I settled on the Discovery, which has a hub-drive motor. Slightly different thing, but $800 cheaper. And a spare battery runs to $700. So by getting the cheaper bike the next model down that meant that i got the spare battery for free effectively because i was prepared to pay for the three thousand dollar bike plus a spare battery and they both use the same battery so i haven't got a mid-drive motor i've got a hub drive motor and this is what three oh, $2,199 buys you from China. It's got a LED headlight. It's got front forks with suspension. 
It's got disc brakes front and back. It's got, I think, seven gears. And it has nine levels of pedal assist. The pedal assist has got a little bit of a snag with it. When I was fantasizing about this whole system, I visualized using the twist grip on the throttle. However, twist grip throttles used to be permissible on electric bikes which had 200 watt motors. This one's got a 250 watt motor and the trade-off with the government was you can't have an electric push bike which uses a twist grip to the motor. They changed all that. Nowadays, what you get is pedal assist. So you have to be actually turning the pedals with your little footsies in order to invoke the electric motor. There are micro switches on the brakes. So if you touch the brakes, the motor is cut out. But apparently, the twist grip still works up to six kilometers an hour for what they call walk assist. So when I'm coming up the hill on foot pushing it, I can invoke up to six kilometers an hour worth of electric pedal uh, walk assistance. And apparently they haven't actually disconnected any wiring. All they've done is they've reprogrammed the computer. And it's entirely possible that somebody who knows what they're doing with a computer can reprogram it back to the point where the twist grip will give you 26 kilometers an hour. But that would be breaking the law. So Do I look like the sort of person who would break the law. Use your own judgment on that. Do I look like the sort of person who can figure out how to reprogram a computer. Use your own judgment on that. Do I have children who could do that? Use your own judgment on that. So anyway, this is the package. We have a $70 helmet. We have a couple of $10 spare tubes. We have a $70 puncture repair kit. We have an owner's manual, which came for free. We have a battery charger, which came for free. We have a $700 new battery, and we have a $170 spare battery charger. Do I look like the sort of person who goes for the belt and braces approach? Well, yeah, at the moment I'm not wearing braces. I have got a belt. But my father's motto was to have a pair and a spare. He used to like to have one good one for himself, one spare one if the good one broke down, a one crappy piece of shit that he would lend to other people and if they didn't give it back it didn't matter. A pair and a spare. I needed a second battery because the literature says that these things are good for 30 to 80 kilometers and my feeling is that 80 kilometers that will be on assistance level one whereas level nine assistance that'll only give you 30 kilometers that's my feeling At the moment, I'm only riding the thing on uh, level three. And the particular run that I want to do is at least 21 kilometers. So my theory is the spare battery fully charged is going to go on the rack. And when I get 21 kilometers away from here to my daughter's place, I will change the batteries. And then when I get back here, I will have two batteries that require to be charged. Here's the thing. Do you notice how brightly that little paint ring is shining? Reflective paint, both sides of both wheel rims. That's a nice safety feature. And they say you've got to charge these batteries every month or so, and this is the one that came off a different bike in the shop. So let's go and see 
how much current it actually takes to run the charger to charge the battery. Can't do it on this rig because that amp meter only goes up to 10 amps and 240 volts times 1.8 amps is going to be closer to 30. Whereas over here in the pyramid, we have a 30 amp meter connected to the 300 watt inverter. And it says input 100 volts to 240 volts, 1.8 amps max. And I'm assuming that that 1.8 amps max is at 100 volts. So it's really only expected to take 18 amps because we're pumping 240 volts into it. Output 42 volts at two amps, which is 80 watts. And the charge is also made by Tebco, the electric bicycle company. Here we have the charger port. Over here, we have a button that says the battery has got current in it. The instructions say to plug the battery into the charger firsties, and then, and only then, plug the charger into the source of all power. And I don't know whether the charger will be able to start the inverter or whether I'll have to go over to the hut and switch on something that has a direct circuit. So here we go. There we go. Nothing happens at all. So, to the western intervention. Now, we have 240 volt current coming into the hut. We have the radio's transformer just barely right on the bottom edge of being able to run the inverter. And there we go. Nine amps. Charger is on and that light will turn to green when the battery is full. So, what do you know? After spending 18 months waiting for a Danish electric bicycle via Melbourne, quite literally it what may well be the last possible available opportunity to collect an electric bicycle. Warbles on the lot now has $3,200 worth of electric sitting down running machine. There is a $250 trailer rated at 60 kilograms, also apparently in the pipeline. And those of you familiar with the story will know that I have already bought one and a half thousand dollars worth of batteries to go with the, I think that's about a $250, 170 watt solar panel. Oh, look at that. We drop down to 8.2 volts, uh, 8.2 amps at 13.3 volts. So yeah, it's all working. It is in fact all working. And pretty soon, that space over there will be occupied by these batteries here, which are currently not quite fully recovered from their Marathon 57 day delivery experience. But by alternating what I run the hut on, one night I'll run the hut on these batteries, and the little fan blown inverter. The next night I run the hut on the solid state 30 year old inverter over there in the pyramid with no fan. So you save half an amp the whole time you're operating it. Um, these batteries, if I charge them up, hold them at 14 and a half volts all day, come back the next day at nine o'clock in the morning, they're holding 12.93 volts in the morning. Under a two amp load, which has the whole, you know, the, the radio, the light, the mobile phone charger, it's my normal nighttime load. Under a two amp load, that 225 amp hour 12 volt battery there, two six volts linked together, 
it's going down to 12.55 volts and then coming back up to 12.68, 12.7 volts and it'll hold 12.7 volts for at least three hours before it starts to gradually drop back down into the 12.6s. So I think those batteries are about as good as they're going to get. Um, so yeah, those batteries are going to go into the pyramid and the pyramid can now charge the electric bikes battery and I've got two batteries. So if COVID really knocks Australia flat on its ass and if owing to problems with COVID testing the transport drivers and at the moment to cross a state border, your truck drivers have to have a negative COVID test every three days and it currently takes five days to get the results back from a COVID test at the border. Everything on every shelf in every shop in all of Australia got there on a truck that runs on diesel. If Australia's economy collapses and there is no available petrol or diesel, I have now acquired the ability to get to town and split me mother's firewood and say good day to me kids without having to burn any petrol in the fire chariot. And the funny thing is, I only paid $3,000 for the fire chariot. I've just paid as much for a new electric bike as I paid for a second-hand four-wheel drive. Admittedly, the second-hand four-wheel drive took another $2,500. Might have been $3,000. Yeah, $3,000 to rebuild the gearbox. So it's a $6,000 four-wheel drive six years ago, whereas this, what are we looking at, $4,500 so far? nearly $5,000 with the batteries and the solar upgrade in order to run the charges for the push bike battery. Got it at the very last instant. I would probably annoy the atheist by suggesting that there's no point having a God theory unless it works every day and in real time. What are the chances? If my mother hadn't had to go into the hospital in Armadale, I would never have discovered there was an e-bike shop in Armadale. Despite all the lockdowns, I was able to get down to Armadale to collect the old girl and purchase the e-bike during the lockdown. And I had police permission. In fact, it was the police officer who suggested that you might want to drop into the push bike shop and see if they're open. And if they're open, come home with your e-bike so there we go Rachel you asked for a uh, a video on the e-bike when it arrives and I've spent over a year wondering whether it would ever arrive and now with a fluorescent green gyro tremor brand helmet made of foam and apparently good for one crash after which you buy yourself another $70 helmet and consider yourself lucky that your head didn't get caved in. All I can say is if you see a fluorescent green helmet on a maroon e-bike cruising along the New England Highway, pretty please try not to use me for your hood ornament. Go around me, yeah? Otherwise, I will use this to draw your attention. Isn't that cute? Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.